Well, I'm excited today. We are ramping up and continuing the Get to Know Your Wedding Pro podcast series. We have Sarah Ann today, photographer extraordinaire. I see you everywhere posting. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I can't say that the weather in Seattle is doing pretty good, but I am. <laughs> I, it's horrendous. Our May, our last couple May weddings, I feel so bad for the couples because I, it's been really bad. It's been really rough weather. It is extremely rough. And you're just like, I'm sorry, um, Seattle, I know we have this like reputation we're trying to uphold of being a rainy city, but you got to give us a break. <laughs> So you're located in Black Diamond. Obviously, you work all over the place. Uh, I guess first and foremost, always I always like to ask photographers, kind of describe your style, right? What is what is? How do you look at the way that you photograph the world? No, oh, what a great question. Um, so I really look at my style as a mix of editorial meets documentary. So I think it's really valuable to a client to understand that they're not going to be like thrown to the wolves and like they don't know how to pose and I'm just going to be like, ah, figure it out. So I like the editorial aspect of helping people pose, um, but always in a very gentle demeanor. So it's, it's never like, I want you to put your eyelashes here and your elbow here and your waist here. It's just like, Hey, I want you guys to go be with each other. Go for a little walk. And so then basically the most editorial parts of the day are mostly when it comes to like the portraits, but then everything else is very documentary. I love being a fly on the wall and just watching all the little stories that happen around the couple. I think those are like probably the most valuable memories for them. So I really take a lot of pride in looking and documenting those. Well, it's hard. It's, and I never know that, right? Cause as a videographer, we're kind of always trailing right in the background. It's always a tough line of like how much direction do you give versus how much do you want them just to be able to, you know, kind of live their day. It is a hard line to walk there. Oh, I completely agree. And I think that, I think couples just want to feel a little bit of comfort and like held in the sense of like, I know my photographer knows what they're doing, but they're also not going to leave me stranded. So if you sense this moment happening of like, they're like, I don't know what to do with my hands, like a Talladega Nights moment. It's really nice when you can gently step in to help those things. I went to a conference one time called All You Witness, where they were teaching basically a very pure documentary style, like almost photojournalism. And I find that in the wedding industry, for at least for my clients that I have and that I love working with, that is just unattainable. Like there is no way to be so out of it that you're like completely untouching the wedding day. Like people look to you for your expertise. That's why they hired you because they want to look a certain way and like you're the person that has to meet them in the middle, like make it them, but also make it beautiful. It's hard. Cause I, you know, very few times in my life have I ever gone out and like done photo of any kind. Right. Generally I'm just snapping. We a one or two kind of did do stuff for my website. And then I'm always like, Oh, that looks weird. Like they, that hand is weird or they, there's a booger in the nose or I don't know. There's always something that like, I'm not, cause you really have to have that fine attention to detail. I just think video is a lot more forgiving that way. Photo, it really has to be perfect coming in. I mean, obviously you can tweak stuff in Photoshop, but it, it's, a lot harder. Uh, I don't envy you guys. Yeah. Because if you think about it, like if we're having like a couple walk towards us, like you're getting the whole thing. So like people understand that people walk like natural people, but if my camera frame yeah. is off by a second and like there's hair in front of a face, like that doesn't look good as a still frame, but like that movement yeah. looks gorgeous in video. And I think that's definitely why people need to be masters of their own craft because like those are two completely different ways of documenting. 100%. Yeah. It's totally. Yeah. <laughs> the, the hair's flowing or the, they're, they're kind of meandering along. Uh, so how did you get involved in, in photography? Is this something you grew up with a camera in your hand or how did we start this journey? So, um, I was one of those people in high school where like, you have to have an art credit and I was like, Oh, well, photo kind of looks cool. And, um, my dad had an old 35 millimeter. So I ended up just taking it because I needed the art credit. And also my older sister is an extremely talented artist when it comes to like graphic design and drawing and painting. And I knew I didn't have that natural talent. So I was like, okay, I, I can't make something, but I can take something. And so I fell in love with it from day one. I was absolutely horrible at it. I can show you the old portfolio to prove it. Um, and I just stuck with it all through high school. And I got to my senior year and I told my parents, like, I want to be a photographer. And they were like, <laughs> go get a real job. So I ended up going to college for um, business and ended up hating it. But because I had done running start as a high school student, I had two years of tuition left over after I graduated 
graduated from UW. So then I went back to art school and I actually went through the Seattle Central Commercial Program, which was incredible. And in that program, you have to have an internship as part of your graduation requirements. And I ended up interning at a wedding studio. And that's how I got introduced to weddings. Uh, so going through it, do you find that so the the that film kind of degree you got right the arts school degree do you find that that helps you now because i know like there's a lot of people self-taught right video kind of everything else do you and having gone through that commercial and everything does that help you and kind of how you look at everything yeah because i think what happens is like when people are self-taught they're learning based off of people who like have filters and have a style and have this thing. And they're not really learning the fundamentals of like how a camera works, how light works, how editing works, how color science works. And so having that like formal training, especially in terms of like a commercial side that really helped my editorial eye when it comes to the way I look at my photos, because I'm thinking as it of it as like a commercial or very graphically. Um, a lot of people are drawn to very editorialized images because they have that graphic element and not a lot of people know what it is that they're loving. Like it's hard for them to put, to put their finger on it. But when you come from a commercial studio background, it's really easy to just have that vocabulary and those tools in your belt to understand what you're looking at and therefore be able to replicate it. So I'm also <laughs> an Enneagram type one perfectionist. So for me, schooling is super important because I feel like I have to have all the tools and then all the rules, and then I can know how to break them, if that makes sense. It's hard. It's, it's, it's a weird balance. Like I felt like I learned some stuff in school. Like I went to broadcast and I didn't, it's some stuff you got to kind of be out in the field for, but I think that kind of, like you said, knowing like why we do the things that we do, I think is really helpful. Right. So it, it's always a fine balance. I'm just always curious, especially with photography, because there's so many just naturally gifted people. Right. It's like, did you just pick that up? Did you have to kind of study that? I mean, where, you know, to, to kind of get that eye for being able to, to view things the way you do. Yeah. And I think for me, it started with a really pure curiosity of like wanting to learn this art form and not being good at it. And then like putting in the work and the due diligence to then become the artist that I am, because I feel like for me as like in my own brain, if I have all of the understanding, then I'm able to make it my own. But like, I hate fumbling in the dark. <laughs> That's not the way that I love to learn. Um, but yeah, I agree with you to your point of some things you just learn in the field. And I think that's true of any schooling you do, any job you have, you're going to learn 90% of it on the job. And I think having the solid schooling behind me, it made me better at weddings in particular, because weddings are an ever-changing environment. Like it is so inconsistent, like what you're doing throughout the day that you have to have this like really solid knowledge base to be able to jump around and to make it look consistent. I totally agree. And it, it's hard you know, we're in the wedding industry, right? Like we're dealing with some people that do a lot of weddings a year, some people that do, you know, on the weekends sometimes. It, 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 it's hard because it is one of those, like you can't learn on the fly. Like you really need to be able to get in there. Like we had a wedding a couple of weeks ago and I had to live stream it and like the internet wasn't working and they had all these connection issues. And I told Dorothy after I go, you know, if I had had 30 less seconds in the day, like I wouldn't have been able to get that going. Right. And it was because of that knowledge that I have. And like you, you know, being able to like repetition and being able to kind of like where it's not even like practice anymore, it just kind of comes naturally to you to be able to walk in and kind of deal with all those, like you said, ever changing circumstances. Yeah. And I think that, you know, practice is obviously practice doesn't leave to perfection, but practice leads to progress. And so the more experience you have under your belt, the better you're able to cope with like the insanity that is a wedding day. Like I think of our industry from the outside and I'm like, I would never choose that again. Like I love it now because I've just been in it and like, I find the joy in it, but looking at it from the outside, you're like, Oh, that's very stressful because of like how much, how many variables we're dealing with on a daily basis. And yeah, I totally, there have been like those 30 second moments where like, you know, a DJ calls something out and you're not in the room and you're grabbing camera and you're adjusting settings based off your knowledge of like, what does a dance floor need? And, oh, it's wild. Uh, so talk to me about your typical client. Who do you like to work with for wedding days? I would say like my typical client is someone who 
like all very cliche photographers say is like someone who values art, someone who values the photography experience, but also that gives you that trust to be able to create what you're going to create for them. Because like, ultimately they've looked at your work, they like what you do. And so they kind of need to like a little bit, like not have us hold their hand through it. But I would say my clients in particular are very laid back people. They like pretty things and they just like to have a good time. I think people who are more interested in like what a wedding day is actually about, which is their union and then all of the people in their in their circles that like got them to this point and celebrating with them like that is what I look for the most in my couples is like what do you truly value and like of course I want them to value me but it's like as long as they value like what's actually happening that day that's that speaks a lot to me like when people are like I just really want this one photo for my Instagram and I'm like Mm, I am not your photographer. So sorry, honey. Well, also sometimes you get them where they have like 8,700 items on their shot list. I'm like, these are the things that we want from our wedding. Like we have a wedding coming up where the photographer shared that with me. And it's like, wow, that's, you know, I mean, a lot of this stuff's like natural, like you would get anyway, but you're just like, wow, this is really, and I don't know if that's good or bad that they're thinking that far through it. I, I think that you need to have the trust that you're going to be able to capture the things that you need without, you know, uh, bride with maid of honor, bride with second maid of honor, bride with but I think we have some of these kind of <laughs> locked down anyway. <laughs> exactly. And you know, what's really funny is you were talking about this on one of your last episodes where you're talking about why I don't give out the raw files. And I think the group of photographers you had on that episode really shed some light on this and it's about trust. And it's about like making sure like people just, it's their first rodeo, like they're one and only, and they don't realize we've done this, you know, hundreds of times. So we know to look for those things. And so it's just like, it's, I usually like chalk it up to just nerves. Like they're just nervous and they just want to make sure you're getting the things that are value valuable to them. So one of the ways that I actually kind of negate that like overshare of a shot list is they get a wedding questionnaire about six weeks before their wedding. And I ask them to list out things that are outside of the norm. Like I'm going to get you with your mom and your dad and your sister and every single bridesmaid and all that stuff. Tell me about the people who aren't that you wouldn't normally think of. Like, do you have an auntie who was like a second mom to you who's super important? Or is your niece the light of your life? Like, those are the things that I really want to pick up on more so because everything else, like you said, is very standard. Like, we got this. This is part of the package deal. We got you covered. But tell me about the unique things about your story. It was interesting. I was just training one of our new videographers. He's done video for years, just hasn't done a lot of weddings. And it was like the questions he was asking me during the day. I'm like, oh yeah, like you don't know, you know, normal people don't know all this stuff. You know, he's like, well, like, so what, you know, what's next or what's going on? And it's just like you said, we've been through this a lot and it's kind of walking the hands. I appreciate when the couples, like you said, kind of trust our expertise in that way. It's really hard when you kind of have the know it all groom or bride or whoever, and you're like, I, I, I got this, you know, I might have done this a couple more times than you. Or you have like, you know, the very well-intended maid of honor who already had her wedding and had her experience and is like yeah. trying to control every single thing. Um, I have definite horror stories about that, but ultimately for me, like I never look at that person as like the antagonist to my story of the day. It's more of like, okay, how can I gain this person's trust? Cause once the, the, you know, whoever it is, who's being over controlling, once they trust me, the rest of the day is going to go really smoothly. And a lot of the times that's just like me answering their questions, being like, Hey, this is what I think. This is my expertise, blah, blah, blah. And nine times out of 10, that person's gonna be like, Oh, you actually did hire someone who's awesome. Like, let's just let her do her thing. Well, and honestly, I think that like young females kind of get shat on a little bit when it comes to weddings. It was like, well, what do you really know? Or like, what, how long have you really been doing this? And like, when you have been doing this for many, many years and have done a lot of weddings, like that always kind of annoys me too, is I just think that they kind of look at me like, okay, let him go do his thing. And I think there's a higher level sometimes with some of the, you know, some of the vendor types and then some of the people that fill those roles that I just don't think it's always fair either. Oh yeah. There's definitely sexism in our, in our industry. So it's like, I have a really great friend who's a DJ and I love it when we get to do weddings together. Cause it's just like fun banter for me. It's like, you know, our industry is really unique because we get to straight up refer our friends and then we get to work with our friends for a day. But every time we work together, because we're so chatty and very like casual with each other, people assume that he's a, my husband and B owns our businesses. And I'm like, no, not at all. Thank you so much. Um, and so I think for what's ironic though, is that people, I think it's changing, but I think that it is a 
typical stereotype to look to men to lead. However, I will say that through several friends who are male wedding photographers, it is harder for them to get booked because women are much more comfortable with a female perspective. Um, especially because, you know, when she's putting on the dress, you're there for intimate moments. Women have a natural nurturing about them and our personalities and the way that we work with our couples. I think women tend to be a lot more like reassuring to our couples. Like we like give them encouragement behind the camera. We, you know, make sure that we're talking to mom and we're, you know, making sure sister feels good. And like, we have this very like motherly presence on a wedding day. And I don't think that's true of every single person, but I think of women in general. And I think that's why women tend to get booked more, but it is ironic because sometimes they don't always trust us. Um, and I, it's like a really weird dichotomy in our, on a wedding day. It is. So, and this is honest. This would be a good conversation for the, yeah, the best made weddings podcast, like sexism in the wedding industry. I think that would be fascinating to kind of do it. I do talk because yeah, I, I get, I do far better at wedding shows when Dorothy's there with me, even though Dorothy has nothing to do with my business at all. Right. She's a teacher, but like when, mm-hmm. when she's there, it helps. And it is like you said, w- w- with the women leading, I can't think of a, a single husband wife team that I know of any kind of photography or vendor wise where it's not the woman that's doing the majority of everything and it's kind of the husband that's along like most of the husband wife teams i know it's the woman that's doing most of the leg work yeah which i think is so funny and you know what i was just in italy with friends and we were hearing stories about like you know witchcraft and like all like the witch trials and stuff like that and one of the reasons why women were deemed to be witches was because they would do all the math and the accounting for men but then like somehow that translated into they knew too much and it must be witchcraft and i just think it's like oh it's just so funny because like women do have this ability to like men have a beautiful gift of compartmentalizing. Like they can like literally shut their brain off to like this thing and this thing and like just focus on this thing. And women, I feel like all the compartments are open and we're like the, just this big, like jumbled mess, but we can also keep track of that. And I think it's also very true on a wedding day. Um, So yeah, I think that would be a great discussion to have on your other podcast about sexism in the wedding industry um, because it's definitely there. Uh, it's interesting yeah like my brother can like like completely like have a meltdown blow up with you and then like two minutes later it's like okay like so let's like let's move on like it's very like you know shut that you know shut that brick wall or whatever barn door and like we're moving on and yeah like you know dorothy if i say anything that could linger for a week you know it's always it's always omnipresent so yes Yeah. And so just the way that men and women naturally cope with things also impacts the way that we cope with a wedding day. So it's like, you know, something could happen in the early part of a wedding day. And like, if I feel like I've messed something up, that thought carries with me the rest of the day. But for men, they're like, oh, well, move on. Here we go. And so it's like, I envy that about you guys. But I think it's also um, for women being able to keep track of those things in a, in an emotional way, it also can be very useful. So I don't think necessarily that like men are bad at their job or like they should have more of what we have. But I think that if you can find a mix between the female and male energy on a wedding day, I think that's kind of like where the beauty lies. Yeah, with all things in this world, it, yeah, the truth lies kind of somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> what is oh, the idea? Yeah. I get into a lot of debates online with my my football podcast about things. I'm like, I think the truth is always somewhere in between what you are saying and the other person is saying. Uh, you know, we can finish up, but I have a question. Oh, no, I was gonna say, yeah, exactly. Like, it's the middle ground, like things are not black and white. It's not binary. It's like, there is so much gray in this world. Like, you just gotta like, get comfortable with it. Uh, Uh, So since we're talking about the wedding day, what does that look like? If someone's working with you, right? You know, how do you kind of uniquely approach anyone's wedding day and, and photograph it? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily unique, but I like to come in super duper prepared. So again, I have like that wedding questionnaire and it just allows me to focus on what is really important to the couple that day. Um, and then I always arrive super early, introduce myself to all the key players. I definitely introduce myself to every vendor because again, like teamwork makes the dream work. So if they know who I am and we can like have a good like relationship for the wedding day, both of our jobs are made easier. Um, I think what's really unique about what I can do on a wedding day is like schedules running behind do not intimidate me. Um, I have the ability to get what I want, get in and out and get on with it. And I don't necessarily think a lot of photographers have that skill set. Like it's definitely like they come in with this expectation of like how much time they're going to have to do each thing. And again, typically that comes with a lot of newer photographers. Like they don't know how to get all of their key shots in a way that not only 
doesn't eat up a lot of time. You can work within the time constraints, but also makes the couple feel very comfortable and very confident that you got the shot. Um, I think that's probably one of my little superpowers that I have, and I'm really proud of it. And I think that just comes from my background as uh, being on dance team because like we like working in a group of like 55 girls where we're like a like we're a squad and we're having to do all these things like you learn to think very quickly and um, I've just always had that skill set and I think it's really served me in the way that I serve my clients it's really hard we had a wedding late last year and running really behind and there was transit and so traffic and we were late getting to the reception and like we had to go and the photographer like just couldn't kind of you know move at a faster pace right it's like well no like i need to get this and i need to get this and like we gotta like we we have to go here you know and it's hard because like you said you have this idea right the dream okay we're gonna have half hour to do portraits and we're gonna have 45 minutes to do family kind of all this stuff and like you have to be able to kind of adapt that way. It's really hard because I'm just sitting there watching like I, I have nothing to say, you know, I'm just filming what's happening. So we're, it'd be nice to be able to go back upstairs, but I just don't think that's in the cards right now. It was, it got really heated between like the DJ and the caterer and the photographer. I mean, it was a really interesting dynamic because they all just couldn't, also all men just couldn't kind of get their stuff together. So. Yeah. And I think like ultimately when it comes down to that, like a lot of it, I mean, we're artists, so literally the thing that we are working on and delivering is art. It is subjective, and it also has a lot of ego in it because it's part of us, right? As artists, our work is part of us. So then when you get to the point where someone is saying, you can't have the time that you need to do your thing, it feels like an attack. And so ultimately, um, I think, again, that workshop that I went to that basically preached documentary style and just like being like totally leaving your ego at the door that has also served me in like what is best for the couple like what is going to be the best experience for their guests for them like I the last thing I ever want is for someone to come back and be like yeah you really messed that up for me or I really didn't like spending that amount of time at sunset photos even though the light was great like I wanted to be with my people so I think it's, you also have to develop definitely a, a cognitive awareness of like your impact on a wedding day. Um, because ultimately in my opinion, I don't want to be remembered on a wedding day. I want their photos to be remembered on a wedding day. Of course, I want to leave a great impression that they were for me and it's great. Yeah. But in 20 years, if they don't remember that Sarah Ann took their photos, but they remember that feeling that they had when they walked down the aisle and it's captured perfectly in an image I gave them, that. It's all I need. That's that's the dream. It's really hard. And that would be my advice too is, you know, for couples like you need to vocalize that on your day because it is like sometimes you're done or you don't want to do it. And like you said, I mean, we would we could take photos for hours, right? That's kind of why we're there. But but uh, yeah, it's hard navigating that. And like I said, I would always recommend that they kind of let us know because otherwise you, we just keep going. You're just kind of powering through. And if like if people need a break, I mean, I know some photographers, I'm sure you do like kind of do those check ins, right? Like, how are you feeling? But you do need to vocalize that because it is, you'll remember those feelings for a long time. Like you said, when you look at your photos, they'll remember that if like they were feeling stressed or they were feeling tired. Yeah. And like, I remember hearing this insane story where this photographer took his couple out um, for their engagement shoot and it was six hours long. I'm like, who the hell can shoot for six hours for an engagement session? Like at some point you're done. And so again, like, just like you said, it's, it's being aware of the emotional energy around your couple. And I think having a high emotional intelligence, like IQ or whatever they call it, like just being sensitive to those things is critical in our industry because we are a service-based industry that is on like one of the highest stress level days of a couple's entire life. Like besides getting married, buying a house is probably the second most stressful thing that will ever happen to them in terms of like outside of having kids. And so yeah, they might have the most glorious golden hour photo, but if they remember that you took way too long and they missed something with their family members, that is the memory that will be forever attached to that photo, not the photo itself. Yeah, it's the same thing like pushing through if you have like family photos, if people aren't ready, like you're stressing. Like you just that stuff carries with you. And I think that people, photographers, don't realize that sometimes that, that the stress is attached to those memories. And you just have to be kind. Like you have to kill them with kindness. Like you're not gonna get faster, you know, it's like you get further with honey than you do vinegar, right? So if you're just sweet and you are on top of it, you know what you need, you know how to do it, and like you lead with a gentle but firm hand best results you're ever going to get. And I think that, um, on 
at family session or sorry, at the family photo part of a wedding day, that is where I excel because I know exactly how to do what I want to do. Like there is a recipe to the madness. And I have not, I can't tell you like the number of people who come up to me after the family photos and they're like, you were amazing. Like that was so fast. I've never had it done like that. And now we get to go relax. And I'm like, yeah, because like when you have experience, you can provide an even better experience to your next client. Uh, outside of, you know, the wedding day, uh, things that you do to kind of help, uh, I guess, market kind of reach out a lot of word of mouth. How do you, how do you attract your clients? Um, I would say there's definitely a balance of like the hype game and then just showing up authentically. So like, I take a lot of pride in delivering a huge mega preview the next day after a wedding, or at least within 48 hours, because people are just coming off the high of their wedding day. So it's like, if you can deliver all these photos that they then get to like share, post, send, like that just hypes that like hypes you up even more. Cause they're like, Holy cats. Like I got all these images so quickly. And a lot of times their friends will be really jealous because like the number of like brides friends who've been like, Oh my gosh, I had to wait six months to see even a single photo for my wedding. And you just gave them 150. Like that's wild. So I think it's playing the hype game. It's just showing up authentically, especially on Instagram. Instagram is its own monster, but if you can harness the power of it, that is just very genuine to who you are as a person. Your clients feel like they know you, they trust you, they like you, they want to do business with you and they refer you. Um, so I think ultimately marketing just comes down to being authentic and then also having really kick-ass SEO on your website. <laughs> uh, do you feel like you excel at that? Um, yes, I do think I do. I don't think I'm like the best at it, but I mean, I typically rank between page one and page two of Seattle wedding photographer. And again, I have, I have fully booked calendars for the next two seasons. And that's not because like I'm a shitty person and like I'm scamming people. It's because I show up with authenticity. I deliver a great product and like you can learn a couple of tips and tricks on how to do SEO that gets you to the right pages so people can see you. Um, I definitely, when it comes to marketing, I don't believe in like paying for like the not.com or for wedding wire. I think that if that is your client in terms of like you are a, um, high volume photographer at a low price point, I think those are actually great platforms for you. If you are a boutique high-end like vendor, I don't think you're going to find your clients there because typically those clients are always word of mouth. So um, it's showing up, doing a great job, Instagram, SEO. That's kind of what I do. I have a love hate with wedding wire and the knot. Cause I just, it's like, they, you know, they, I just been on there for so long. I mean, I think wedding wire was the first thing I ever did. It you know, was it nine years ago. And I just, I have a hard time kind of leaving that nest egg. I mean, it's, it's hard. They, they really wrap you in there. It makes you feel like you can't escape. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I used to get all the phone calls from them like, Hey, do you want to come back? Cause I, I definitely advertised with them for six months when um, I first started in the industry because I didn't know any better. But like the problem is, is like, especially when you look at the Seattle market for us on the knot, like there are like eight to nine pages of paid people on there. So I know that like the, the placement rotates every two hours, but it's like, that is like, that is rolling dice. Like you have no idea where you're going to land when someone is at the point of choosing a photographer. So for me, it's like, why would I pay money to have like a Russian roulette of someone seeing me or not when I can do a targeted ad on Google where someone is searching for the exact thing that I want to do or work with. And then I'm right there. And it's like the perfect little matchmaking moment as compared to the knot where like you could never line up with your right person. And it's just like, a, it's a luck of the draw. I, mean, I feel like I'm canceling my contract after we get off this fight. No, <laughs> uh, moving forward, kind of like you said, you, you know, booked here, you know, a successful, healthy business. You know, we, we've all survived kind of the pandemic, right? So what next goals, right? What are you looking forward to accomplishing in the future? So I think moving forward, um, I really want to give back to the wedding industry that kind of built me. And so I think that what's happening is like photographers, we have like, I would say the longevity of a typical wedding photographer is between like five and 15 years. And that's if someone's super dedicated, but every year we're getting this fresh wave of people who come in and that younger generation is very good at social media. They're very good at Instagram. They're very good at shooting, but they're not really good at the business side. And I think that the number of people that I have talked to who have like their finances are a mess. They don't have a CRM system They're They don't have real contracts and like that's fumbling them up in being a super successful 
successful wedding photographer. I've actually built a business course for wedding photographers so that they can learn that side, like that complements their their client experience and complements their photography. Um, I just, I'm really strong at that part of my business and I really love it. And I love teaching and I love helping people. So I'm really looking forward to stepping into the more of the education side of our industry over the next couple of years. And um, the full launch for my course is in the fall. I did a beta launch here in the spring. So I have my first little round of students, which is really fun. And then it'll be the full fledged deal in the fall. Well, that's exciting. Cause like you said, and especially like, not that, Video too, but it, I think a lot of the people just think, oh, I just going to pick up a camera and go, right? And obviously, there's there's all the skill that goes into doing the photography, right? We can get into that, you know, for hours. But then it is running a business, knowing how to do all that stuff. Weddings, it's not like going out and shooting dog portraits for your friend or doing family photos for your aunt or whatever. I mean, there's just there's so much more pressure involved in the money and, and, and families. And, and like you said, having all those contracts and everything in place, I think is really important. And I, I don't, like you said, if everyone has that going when they're kind of entering the business. Yeah. And I don't think I, here's the thing is I don't think it's uncommon for people to start with the camera and be like, let's just see if this works. And then you find yourself successful and then you're like, Oh crap, I never set up any of the important things. And so the course that I made is kind of dedicated to the people who are like one to two years into their business. And they're in that like, Oh shit moment. Like, uh Oh, like I don't have systems and I'm overwhelmed and I'm now failing my clients because they're not getting what they need from me. Even though in the most earnest way, I'm trying to do my best possible. So it's like, it's the simple things that like people don't think about that really make the ultimate difference in a client experience. And then therefore building your business, cause you're going to get more and more client referrals from that. Uh, so you said you're a soft beta launch and then that's coming out in the fall. Is that the plan? Yeah. So the soft beta launch has already happened, which is awesome. It happened um, just before I left for Italy at the end of April. And then the full mega launch, I think it's going to be around the November, December time. Cause typically in the, at least in Washington market, that's when we're kind of headed into our off season. And a lot of people do that revamping during the winter months before we kick back off for next year. So what this beta launch is allowing me to do is really get my hands and feet into other people like that sounded really weird. <laughs> what I mean is like getting my toes wet in, in like teaching people and like understanding like, okay, where were my blind spots? Like what are things that people are actually also needing? Um, but I will say like, what's crazy is like when I sat down to do it, like this took me two years to build this because like, once you sit down and you actually look at everything you do as a business owner, it is overwhelming. You were like, how am I, how, how do I organize this? How do I teach someone in a way that makes sense? How do I do it? So people understand that, no, you really have to go in order and this is why. And, and how, like how you group things together. It was, it was like the most intense thing I've ever done. <laughs> Uh, well, no, because it is. It's like, and it's all for uh, like secondhand to you now. And it's it's like you have all your chicken scratch right all over the walls. And you're like, how do I like, how do I verbalize this for someone else that's like walking in uh, and trying to do, you know, replicate at least some of the some of the kind of procedures I have going on. So it's hard. Yeah, it's extremely hard. And it's also like, okay, how do I make, like, how do you, how do you decipher your chicken scratch? <laughs> and then does your chicken scratch even make sense? So part of like building a course is also taking your own course because you're like, okay, I need to practice what I preach. And maybe like, I needed to refine a couple of things while I was like, oh yeah, like, I know I should be doing this and I'm going to teach other people to do it. Why am I not doing it? So it's like, I, yeah if you were to sit down and like try to write out everything that you do in a single day or a single week or a single season for your clients, it is absolutely wild. And the fact that we do it alone, like a lot of people don't have a team, they don't have, you know, multiple departments, like they are the person and they are the only person. So then it's like another thing that I wanted to teach people is how do you manage that in a way that's not going to drive you insane? Oh, that's good. Well, I think that that is a good idea. I think that let me know when this comes out, we'll help promote it. Because I think that that is a good, like you said, kind of giving back and, and imparting your knowledge on uh, on other people. And I am serious. I think we need to do a sexism in the wedding industry episode of, of the uh, Best Made Weddings podcast. We'll have you on for that. I'll start brainstorming working on that here soon. Oh, I would absolutely love to do it. And you know, what? I think it'd be really interesting to, I would love to hear the male's perspective of like, 
like, does it affect them in the sense of like, oh, like someone thought I was in charge of her, but I wasn't. And I felt really bad or like, I love it that I'm always in charge. Like just, I would love to hear just like a really great conversation between men and women about how that affects our jobs. Because I don't think that sexism is only against females. I think it can also go against males and having that space where both sides can like talk about the struggles we have around that will, I think, lead to better solutions for like moving forward in our industry. Well, this has been good. I'm glad we could do this today. Step one, step two, we'll bring you back for that. We'll have more in-depth episodes. Uh, is there, and if people want to find more about you, where all your work, everything else that you have going on, where would you have them check out? Um, I would love for you guys to check out sarahannphoto.com. That's Sarah with an H and with an E, photo.com. And then on Instagram, I'm Sarah underscore Ann underscore photo. Um, I'm sure you can just get it off of the Instagram off of Reed's feed. So it should be totally fine. But yeah, just Sarah Ann. Well, I really appreciate this. Like I said, getting you more of these, get to know your wedding pros or ramping this back up. So I uh, thank you so much. If you're like Sarah, you want to come on the podcast, you can go to bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guest. It's a nice, easy questionnaire to get you in. And this has been Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Thanks for listening.